Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be finishing off the narration and character voicing for the Maria Neural side story in Ark Knights. And as it is usual with all of the final parts on this channel, we'll be including the final battle stage as well into today's narration as is norm. Uh, but in a slightly different way than, uh, than I do it usually. And you will see uh, why that is when we get to the final battle stage. Uh, but outside of that, uh, at the end of the episode, I usually voice, uh, at the end of final episodes, I usually voice my uh, thoughts about it. I will do so here, but in a slightly reduced manner, because this story is obviously a small part of a bigger story. This is essentially the prequel story that leads into uh, the much, much bigger Neural Light story, much longer. Oof, that one is definitely longer. Uh, but anyway, I will obviously still say a couple of words at the end of it. And uh, outside of that, all I can say is if you, in the meantime, I know Mliner is going to be literally out as this, uh, on the same day that this video goes live. So first off, good luck on, on the polls if you are going to be pulling for him. I know I will. Uh, and you can expect a video for that later in the day. Uh, but outside of that, before the uh, Neuralite story kicks off in... Uh, in the in the post of this one we do have a story that takes place both alongside this one i think also both prior alongside this one and in between uh maria neural and neural light and that is the penis sylvestri side story that focuses on the nightclub that um flametail ashlock and the others are part of uh which i did a narration on all the way back here back last year so if you want to go and uh, give that one a go at some point uh, link is in the description in the video if you haven't obviously seen that story yet it is filling in a couple of blanks and uh, it is bridging the gap between uh, the two these two big stories but outside of that I am excited for Mliner I hope you guys are and um, if you're watching this in the future, <laughs> somewhere way post this, <laughs> way post Miller's, Miller's release, uh, well, I hope you're excited for a rerun. Uh, but anyway, shall we begin with the usual? So, for everybody who wants to skip the recap section, uh, timestamp, as per usual, in the comment section below. Uh, hit it and you will be right at the stages with the story. In the meantime, also, thank you very much for the likes on the previous episode. And uh, let's keep on going shall we so in the previous part well we have seen that people have started to be more and more displeased by uh, how Maria is performing in the competition especially because she is uh, declining every single sponsor she is not an official knight yet and on top of that uh, pretty much every single uh, of the big big uh, conglomerates are being like Nah, she needs to be she needs to be smacked down, and we've seen the results of that. As things move around, we see Charney talking to uh, the representative of the uh, well, representative these. What what was he introducing himself? The, the the like spokesman for the Sloma group? I can't remember anymore <laughs> right now. Uh, but yeah, we've seen him talk very cryptic cryptically and very openly with. Uh, with the guy for a while, uh, for some reason. Uh, then we've also seen Charney talk to uh, the Plastic Knight. The Plastic Knight seeing what is happening as he is being uh, pretty much taken out of the tournament at this point, or rather benched for that matter. Uh, Plastic goes all the way to Marcin's bar to inform him that uh, shit is moving around and that uh, he should warn pretty much heed the warning of something bad is coming their way and they should uh, keep an eye on Maria. Uh, we've seen Platinum getting uh, being moved around and Maria apparently being a target to watch out for for her. And uh, we've seen Maria take on probably her toughest opponent yet in the entire tournament. And that was our dear old left hand knight uh, Titus Topola. Topola? 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 I don't know. I never know how to pronounce his name properly, but whatever. Pardon. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> but anyway, the two clash 
Titus is definitely uh, uh, that definitely has the upper hand in the battle. Maria does, however, keep on persevering as she's using her healing arts essentially to keep herself alive. Uh, and during the battle, memories flash of uh, conversations past, one with her grandfather especially. And uh, certain words go through her head and she finally, finally, for the first time, uh, focuses, focuses her thoughts on why she is in the tournament. And that is for herself. She does eventually beat uh, Titus Reigns victorious, but was definitely heavily wounded during the whole thing. She will be uh, recuperating for a while, <laughs> believe me that, but uh, she did win at the end of the day. And that is pretty much where we left off in the last episode. The only other thing that has happened during that whole part was that the uh, Flametail and Ashlock Knights have been uh, pretty much taken out of the tournament and are being now chased. They do at one point also end up at Marcin's bar before before the whole uh, fight with uh, Titus broke out. They get treated there for one night and then leave and are being escorted away to safety by V and Cole. But yeah, that is about it. So, let us begin with today's part. So then, today's part, we will start here on stage, or rather on the scene, MNST-2, titled Wine Glass. The lifespan of a glass cup far surpasses that of a hero. That is a sad sentence. Mr. Charney, there's too many calls coming from the various departments. We can't handle them all. Just think of something. Try to make those still sane understand that victory and value are not equal. Uh, oh, okay. Uh. Sir Left Hand, do you really not require for medical examination? No. Being able to knock me unconscious right when I was casting my arts is already the limit of her ability. She is still far from being able to seriously injure me. Pardon my bluntness, but the results of this match were a shock to many. <laughs> Even without an insignificant victory in this match, I will still bring the entirety of the Blade Helmet nightclub into the Major with me. Very not, spokesman. You're very confident. Good. If you had gone all out, Maria Nurl would have stood no chance of victory. I hope that you will be able to deal with the fallout of this unexpected loss. I will not make excuses for myself. You may end up losing opportunities from some major sponsors. Perhaps your nightclub can. If those people are only able to see the most Superficial wins and losses and cannot understand how to man <clears throat> pardon how to manage their in interests, then they are not fit to work with me. You're right. Hype is the basis for profit. The consumers have only ever cared about what they can see. In other words, they are only trying to get some sensory stimulation without being aware of it themselves. However, I never expected that Sir Titus Topola himself would place such a clear price on his own failure. Spokesman, do not, do not attempt to provoke me. Yes, yes, my apologies. We will leave as soon as we are done handling all those troublesome matters. Let us meet again at the Major, Sir Left Hand. <clears throat> So, that's it. Sona and them were doing such things. The Infected Fighters Arena. I'd heard of this competition format. No, this cannot even be considered a format. Whether or not they come from a knight family, anyone can become a competition knight, earn the recognition of the Knights Association through their grit and become a noble. But the Infected... They'll let the Infected join the competitions, but there is no... Con country that would let an infected become a pillar of society. 
That's why they are segregated in another competition format. The infected could earn money and live on, but they'll forever be simple gladiators trying to entertain the masses. There ain't any meaning to such a sideshow. Oh, and don't mean anything by that. You old geezer, can't you be more tactful with your words? Who the hell am I supposed to be tactful for, huh? They're almost onto us. The infected banner is worrying, but now is not the time to be worry worrying about them. Yeah, they changed their fate as infected through their own tenacity, but have saved many people. If we want to change anything, we will have to continue moving forward. Little Maria has become a respectable knight capable of such words. If only Margaret could see this, surely she would be gr gratified. Don't speak of the Radiant Knight like she's dead, you idiot! You're the one twisting my words, Kowal! <laughs> Maria, what's wrong? N nothing <clears throat> The Champion's Wall, what a lousy place for a conversation. Pictures of all the old champions, huh? This Black Knight has... This Black Knight alone has three spots. Even though she dominated the Major for so many years, she doesn't seem to have aged today. <sighs> Why do I feel like she looks younger than me? Miss must be kidding. Is that just good genes? How nice. How enviable. The Black Knight surely left an impressive mark on the history of the night sports. No one could ever... No one could have ever guessed that the Lithanian, completely incapable of using arts, would ever become the Black Knight we know today. Her era, her era is long gone, however. She herself left Casimir's. I wouldn't expect you to. Let, <clears throat> I wouldn't expect you to let go of a cash cow like that. A dominating champion would indeed invite many worshippers, but it is very much a de detriment to the development of the industry as a whole, in the long run. In short, it's exciting to see new challengers attempting to defeat the Black Knight, but after she managed to hold her own for three entire seasons, it started to get boring. The Black Knight's prospects near the end of her career weren't very good, the number of people who wanted to get rid of her, one way or another, could fill an entire arena. Her luck was pretty good, though. Just as she was being cornered, she met a VIP from Kierag. She got a reasonable price. That's fat satisfied everyone. So I want to just quickly interject here. Again, for anybody who is new to the game and is listening to this story. The Black Knight story continues and you can actually see and meet the person in the break the ice side story from uh as of this recording last year uh which takes place in Kerak and includes the doctor and uh, a small detachment of Rhode Island people mostly consisting of well operators from the same region which includes pretty much uh, getting getting to know the entirety of the Silver Ash family, amongst many, many other, m many, many other personal and I think also fan, fan favorite characters over there. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, the reason why I brought that up, pardon, <laughs> completely forgot, completely slipped my mind. If you wanna obviously listen to that story in the same fashion, link to it will be in the description of the video as well. Because I did a narration on it last year. <clears throat> anyway, continuing, pardon. Being able to support a good turnover is also a sign of well-developed industry. And then there's this, an empty space. The Radiant Knight? Yes, I don't think I need to elaborate. I know this one. From last season, the Blood Knight. And yes, as she's saying, on the very right of the picture, you can just barely see the outline of the Blood Knight, which we do meet eventually. But not in this story. The Blood Knight's terror and might are unprecedented in the arena. Thankfully, he's rather astute and hasn't caused much trouble for us. You should tell him to make it easy on the. Uh, to 
to take it easy on the drugs from time to time. Knights are the most important assets, right? I will take that to heart, miss. Well, I don't suppose the spokesman of the General Chamber of Commerce invited me here for a history lesson? Sorry to trouble you. The Champion's Wall will be open to the public during the Major, so I have to do a check beforehand. Of course, this is also one of the few places where I can speak without interruption. Hmm. Alright. It's about another job, isn't it? I can't get away anyway, so I might as well listen. It's not just about a job. I wonder if you know what the two Lazarites are doing today. You're not clear to know, and neither am, I, neither am I. I've heard some interesting rumors on the grapevine. What sort of major incident could have happened that would need both Lazarites out moving out in force? Uh, la la la, I don't hear anything, nothing at all. Miss. I've checked all the requests from the other directors. There isn't a single major incident that would require a lazarite, let alone both of them. You don't have to worry about that. Just know it's an order from the General Chamber of Commerce. Is that so? I can rest assured then. You really don't trust me, huh? Why do you say so, miss? You know very well that asking me stuff about my bosses is a waste of time. Are you trying to give a warning to this immature platinum? Alright, alright. Message received. You're very smart. However, my suspicions are also very valid. Even if the upper echelons are hiding things from me, I must perform my duties to perfection. Yes, if you can, please instruct a subordinate of yours to help uh, keep track of someone. Who? Charney glances at the empty spot on the wall next to him. Mliner Nurl. Even though I think that he'll remain a useless piece of trash till the end, we must ensure that he does not affect our future plans. As for you, miss, you must personally ensure that this carries on smoothly. Also, very quickly, before we continue, again, for people who are new to this uh, story and plotline, try until we get to the uh, Neuralite story in the future when the rerun happens, try and remember the unique CG that you've seen. Keep it in mind. <clears throat> Ouch! Please be more gentle. Bear with it. This ointment is really expensive. It's my fault for not teaching you this. Being able to properly manage your injuries during a competition is also important. Lift up your hair. Actually, I didn't expect that it would... Uh, ow! Going up against Ingra and Dentopola, you should count your lucky stars that all, four, that all four limbs are intact and you haven't suffered any major injuries. All right, put your clothes on. Don't move for a few days and uh, and just stay still. Ending up with a stubborn old wound is one of the worst dangers of being a knight. Don't be like me. Thank you, Auntie. Uh, Zofia. <sighs> Maria, that combat style. How did you come up with it? Rather than a combat style, uh, I was forced into it, actually. At, at the time, my only thoughts were, just hold on, there must be something I can do. <laughs> Ow! Don't put yourself through hell for, su for such a stupid reason. The accumulated fatigue will just make your next battles harder. Uh, sorry. <sighs> Luckily, you were able to take advantage of the carelessness of that left hand. If that sadistic pervert didn't underestimate you, then you'd be in trouble. Uh... Have you fought him before? His first match after officially joining the Blade Helmet nightclub was against me. Uh, oh. What happened? That's why he refuses to talk to anyone about his debut battle. It's all in the past, though. There is always a winner and loser in night sports. He doesn't care about me. Mr. Titus seemed to recognize Margaret. Yep. 
the three members of the Blade Helmet nightclub, including him, tried to encircle Margaret during the melee, but ended up getting annihilated instead. Who would accept such an outrageous thing? Uh, is Margaret so merciless? Margaret was very young back then. What was she thinking? Uh, oh, oh, right, right, right. The, the, the. <clears throat> I always concentrate on the sprite uh, who is highlighted, <clears throat> but they didn't highlight Maria for that line, so that was Maria's line. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What do you mean? I remember that she hated night sports from that uh, more than anything, right? There was a time when I even thought that she was just like Uncle Mliner. But in the end, she still went and became a competition knight. And even became the Radiant Knight. I didn't know what she was thinking either, but she should be more aware than most what the night sports represent. Even so, she still went and climbed to the peak. At the very least, there were quite a few people who frequently admired Margaret and were inspired by her to become knights, including me. <laughs> to be honest, that was part of the reason for me too. Who knows, maybe the reason she became the uh, champion was to get a few more Sophias and Marias. Is that it? I don't know either. I wonder if she's living well at that Rhode Island place. Ah! What? what? Don't surprise me like that! There's a notch on my blade! Ugh, you haven't been able to properly maintain your weapon, so it's not surprising that it ended up like this. Can you deal with it yourself? Ugh, maybe if I could borrow Master Koval's workshop. Hmm. What's up, V? Focus on driving, don't make me get out of the... Don't make me get out and call a taxi. I'm just thinking about those two squirrels. If you get out now... If you get out now, I swear I'll run you over. Those infected, huh? That day we almost got into a fight. Those people outside, could they have been... Most likely. Have they set their sights on Maria as well? Why? You're overthinking it. <laughs> It's gonna rain the day after tomorrow. Cloudy. Alright, and we go to our next stage. Our final battle stage of the day. Of, of the day? Of this narration, rather. Titled General Chamber of Commerce. Unshakable and omnipresent, the future belongs to the Casimir's General Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> the first one, the first one out of all of these that sounds like, well, this might be a problem. <clears throat> Team battle? It's a two-on-two, -two, a rather uncommon competition format. Originally, the showcase originally to showcase the teamwork within the Knights Club, uh, Knights Clubs, it should have been at least 3-on-3 three three or 4-on-4. Four four. No matter the format, you don't have a Knight Club, so we need to find you a partner. Oh, who am I, uh, who am I up against? The competition schedule says, says it's the Snow, uh, Snowy Heel Knight Club. They have some decent archers, and even one uh, uh, knight that uses meteor hammers. I don't know who you'll end up against. Maria's final, finally reached a point where we'll know her opponents by name alone, huh? <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maria, defeating Titus is definitely something worth celebrating, but it also means that there will be a lot more eyes on you. Draw on the lessons you learned from Flametail and Ashlock. Don't tip your hand. It's important to compromise and work with the corporations when you have to. Times have changed. You can't hold on to your glory with wins alone. <laughs> Why didn't you help me convince her last time? I didn't have a proper conversation with Maria after you slammed the door. By the way, you broke my door that time. <sighs> I'll cover it. Where's V and Koval? It's that day. They're not back yet. Ah, they're at the gravesite. Shit, I wanted to ask if he if he could help uh, repair Maria's equipment. Just use the, his workshop. 
He even said so himself one time last year drunkenly. If you ever wanted to, Maria, he would gladly pass on his workshop to you. Ah, uh, uh, why haven't I uh, heard this before? Either, either way, he's still sworn to never touch the anvil again. <sighs> Even after so many years. It's hard enough for anyone to let go of the past, let alone us oldies who have nothing but the past. Let's forget about that for them for now. Maria, you'll need to fix up your equipment yourself. And then, do we have a partner in mind? Me? Um... <sighs> D do I actually not have any night friends? That's why I wanted to introduce you to someone. A known quantity is always safer than getting a random random stranger assigned by the association. Uh, who is it? The Far Tooth Knight. She's an expert archer. Just like you, she fought <clears throat> she fought her way up as an independent knight, refusing to accept sponsorships from the corporations. I've heard she is even planning to form a completely self-sufficient nightclub. I think you'll be able to get along and cover each other's weaknesses in battle. You'll come to understand that team battles are completely different from uh, melees or one-on-ones. If only we had more time, you could get to know each other better on the training field. Unfortunately, you'll have to improvise. Oh, okay. This is the disadvantage of being an independent knight. Temporary allies fighting against a battle-hardened team will always be at a disadvantage. I wonder what she's like. I'm a little nervous. <clears throat> this is our third time passing this tree today. Ah, yes, Mr. Charney. You're very accustomed to such work, running between the various arenas and joining in countless teleconferences. Ah, uh, no, there's nothing to be said for someone like me. Your appearance is somewhat sloppy. One's appearance is also an important bargaining chip, is it not? Uh, apologies, to be honest, I was unemployed not too long ago, so, uh... Oh, what has that to do with this? I don't dislike employees like you. Only those who have fallen to rock bottom are able to understand the cruelty we face. It is only... Uh, when you have acknowledged it, that you will be able to make satisfactory decisions. <laughs> Remember each and every word I have said, each and every action I have taken. Um, ah, the meeting, uh, the meeting minutes for the Snow Hill nightclub. Don't worry, I've prepared. No, no, no. Their sponsor is an old friend of mine. They won't trouble us much. It's just for a particularly insignificant working habit of mine. <clears throat> Maria. Hmm? You know I've never approved of you becoming a competition knight, not since the beginning. Uh, huh? Where did that come from? I knew that already. But you've proven yourself. Though it was... Uh, though it was always by the skin of my teeth. Rather than your motivations, platitudes, promises, or whatnot, winning in the arena is the only proof of your determination. Even though you're still very naive. <laughs> Maybe it's your desire to win back the glory of the Neural family that makes you so strong. Though it was just a fluke, being able to take a point of Titus means your upcoming opponents should be manageable. You've developed your own arts techniques. But it doesn't seem to work against particularly strong opponents, un unfortunately. For example, if the left-hand knight had fought seriously from the start, you would have probably lost even if there were four of you. I can teach you swordsmanship and tactics, and you can ask V about archery techniques. You may not look it, uh, he may not look it, but back in the day V was an expert your granddad respected. But when it comes to arts, you are the only one who can grasp your light. Got it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, even though there were unexpected incidents, our plans are progressing on schedule. What? No, you're overestimating our clients. There will definitely not be any condemnation from the audience. They are not a particularly moral bunch. 
Yes, you're right. I'm very thankful for the two helpers you've provided. I will ensure that they will receive an excellent report. <laughs> Bless you, sir. And now everything is ready. Let us await the beginning of this remarkable competition. Oh, you're back. Didn't they promise no rain? Why did it still end up raining? <laughs> you really can't believe all that crap they put on TV. Whether it's news, sports, or weather forecasts. What about Maria? Ain't the competition today. I've got food and wine for the both of you. How was it? What do you mean, how was it? It's been so long, there's few less this year, too. Always less of us to visit the captain's grave. <sighs> she said she challenged me to a drinking contest, but she left before, she, before the booze was even poured. Forget it. It's all in the past. Yeah, <laughs> would have expected that the two of you really stayed single your entire lives for her sake. Stop twisting the knife. Out with the wine. That's right, enough talk about who's still alive and who's not. We're here to enjoy Maria's performance. Cheers, Kowal. Cheers, V. <laughs> Here's a great bar bargain for today. Self-service for all drinks. Help me watch the joint. Oh, is it free? In your dreams. Where are you going? The arena. Oh, you got a hold of a ticket. I got someone to get me one. Tickets now tickets nowadays are so overpriced. That's called business. Good day, sir. Here's the midday report uh, sports news. Thanks, kid. Have some milk. Nice. Thank you, sir. The midday sports news, huh? Uh, wait, what's this? Oh boy, here we go, hold on. N need to oil the vocal cords. Ah. Oh god. <clears throat> the final time for a while, I hope. <clears throat> Welcome! Welcome one and all to the Fireblade Arena! The previous match just ended and the blood of the Soft Wind Knight still stains the ground, but it's just seasoning for the next battle! No doubt everybody here today, uh, today is to witness the splendor of Neural. This lassie here may yet be young, but she's already done mir miracles before our very eyes. We'll have an extra short break. In just 10 minutes, the temporary duo of Maria Neural and the Fartooth far Knife will go against this year's rookies, the alliance of vengeance formed by the elites of past years who failed to enter the major, the Snowy Heel Nightclub. A brand new legend versus the Blade of Vengeance in an all new 2 on 2 point match. What an unbelievable, thrilling sight! The match shall begin soon! <clears throat> Maria, your wounds? Uh, right, they're much better now. It's all thanks to you taking care of me. Alright, I believe you. <clears> hmm, <throat> she's late. Part of has always been bad with time. It doesn't matter, as long as she makes it here before the match. Uh, Miss Maria, Miss Maria Neural, please, head over to the waiting room and get ready. We're about to begin. Uh, it's about to begin. I better get going, Sophia. Yes. <sighs> Sophia, where's Maria? Marcin, why are you here? Oh, I get it. You're still waiting for the Fartooth Knight. She's not coming. Uh, what? Here, the sports page. Hmm, the Fartooth Knight... Seriously injured? She got dragged into a fight between Knight fans and is now MIA. At least, that's what the paper says. Wait, she's got dragged into a fight? This must, this must be fake. What kind of fan violence can cause a battle-hardened knight to disappear? Wait, could it be... Right now, the question is, what do we do for the match? Something is wrong, Sophia. Just think about it. Maria has to forfeit. 
We're out of time. Follow me. No rest for a week a day. What? You still think we're letting them rest too much? Come on. We've got to at least act like we're cleaning up the battlefield, all right? How many of you are here to for Neural? How many of you want to see the lovely Neural? Speaking for myself here as someone who's followed every step this super rookie has taken, I've personally watched this prize pool grow to the king's ransom it is today. Let's look at the numbers. Right here, right now, in every city, every village in the country, the crowd watching this fight is in the hundreds of thousands. Who do we have to thank for this? I'm sure we all know. But I have some tragic news. The Fartooth Knife suffered heavy injuries in the incident last night and remains missing. Even so, Maria did not ch uh, choose to forfeit. She steps into a two-on-one fight, completely undeterred. Let me see how much her bravery means to each and every one of you. Presenting the hottest rookie of this season, Nurl's Little Knight, Maria Nurl! Oh no, is she not here yet? What should I do? No, I can't give up easily. To give up before I've even begun is to disrespect knighthood. Knighthood. Yes, knighthood. And on the other side, two veterans of the Snowy Hill Nightclub! Back in their old nightclubs, they, they failed to make it into the major two seasons in a row. Looking for a way out, they finally end up together in this nightclub of vengeance. The two members of the Snowy Hill Nightclub here today are also well-known knights. They are... A sudden, deafening sound interrupts the announcer. Wait, what's this? Am I seeing things? Uh, no, there's a weird smell. It's really gross. What's happening? <clears throat> Heavy footsteps resound within the 20,000-seat arena. As people regain their senses, the entire place remains silent. Um... A rare occurrence in the world of night sports, in a place that should be packed with vivacious enjoyment. Tens of thousands of tourists and spectac spectators hold their breaths, as if listening for the source of the footsteps. The first to grasp it are VIPs on the grandstand, themselves knights. Is that fog on the field, or Virginia Bart's? Or some special equipment? Is there anyone like that in the Snowy Hill nightclub? Hmm? No, not them. It can't be them. That's... Uh, those are... Uh, knights? Goal. I know, I know, let's go. That thing... They're trying to kill Maria. Hmm. Miss, all teams are in position. Don't be so nervous. You're here to stop anyone from coming into the arena. Yes. But if we have to stop... If that Mliner dares try anything, I'll deal with him. Even though it'll be a huge pain. <sighs> Uh, so, these are these no heel nightclubs, uh... Hey, what's going on? The deal for the day was... What? Huh? I can't figure out which of them is it. The snowy heel nightclubs! The corrupted and withered knights! The expected cheering does not materialize as silence envelops the audience. Naturally, the first thought in their minds is that of terror. However, they soon come to realize that this terror is not for themselves, seated in the audience, but for the young girl who has not yet understood her situation. This cruelty brings about a striking round of applause. This... isn't it too, this too scary? Nora's going to fight these two all by herself? Hey! Isn't this going to be an amazing show? All right, let's start the map. What? Target hit. <clears throat> Why 
Why so? <laughs> oh, shield, very durable. Not easy. No matter. Kill her. Not difficult. They're already exchanging lightning fast blows before the match has even started. Is this a problem? <laughs> of course not. In fact, the match has started the moment the knight stepped into the field. Can Neural turn this around? Or will she choose to forfeit early? What? Not allowed to forfeit? This... Uh, uh, fine. <clears throat> Within each of your hands lies the only way to turn the tide. Invest your money in the pitiful Maria. Maybe those simple little toys will be her key to victory. Uh, this fog. What is it? My arts are being suppressed. My wounds. I can't heal them. Uh, ow. Target losing ability to resist. Kill her quickly. Like an accident. Understood. No, don't even think of giving up. Think of a way to... These two Sarkas are twins? Their arts are almost the exact same. <laughs> then, let's try again. Eh? Uh, this is unbelievable! What just happened? There was a sudden explosion on Maria's body and the corrupted knight followed up with a hit that sent her flying! Was it bitter? Corrupted? Does it matter anymore? <laughs> Blood? Why, why aren't my arts working? She is vomiting blood. The arts have taken effect. Faster, bitter decay. I can smell her death. She cannot escape. Maria, forfeit the match quickly! Let me go, Marcin. Do you want to die with her? <laughs> dying together is better than Maria dying alone. Sophia! Hurry up, Kowal. Don't run so fast. I'm not a Coranta. Sorry, you're not allowed back here. You. Former level 2 campaign knight, Vogelweide. Or should I say, Batbayer. Your bloodline had you fighting all over the world. You got to run and howl across prairies of no man's land. And you, se senior craftsman of the Craftsman Guild, Koval. Your master was a great blacksmith, respected by the Silverlands Pegasus. And your apprentices are still out there on the front lines, even today. You're both fine, upstanding Casimir citizens. Could you just, like, um... Leave? The way you talk ain't nothing like that little girl I once met, Platinum. Hmm. You know? Yes, we know. Of course we know. We have a personal grudge with some of your bosses. Ah, so that's how it is. I heard that the last Platinum's first job was to assassinate a campaign knight. A really pretty lady named... <laughs> Both of them? Shut up! Funny, another leader dying for a woman in the end. Maybe working this job too uh, too long really does screw with your head. <sighs> I gotta take up vacation, go traveling. Stop wasting time with this crap. Are you the ones messing around with Maria? Keep watching the perimeter. I'll deal with this. Yes. So you have helpers after all. Why not call them out? I really don't want to fight you. Can we not just take a step backwards? <laughs> That's funny. An assassin of the Armorless Union has a soft heart. Don't worry, I won't go all out against a young lass like you. When you've given up, we'll be off to rescue Maria. V. I'm... I'm fine. Just a scratch. I just didn't expect her to draw her bow that quickly and accurately. Yeah, she's done talking. She might she might be young and immature, but she's still above the dreg dregs of the Arborless Union, as the plat Platinum in that 1, 2, 3 inverted triangle of theirs. Mm. I'll take that as a compliment. 
Get ready, Cobble. Let's see if you've still got it. <laughs> I've long suspected that you're half blind now, V. Alright, alright. Do you do, feisty olds? Don't sprain your backs. <clears throat> Are you leaving now? Yes, it's time. The time is tight. Then, please be careful. Please, please be very careful. Don't worry so much. She's still with you, right? Yes. Don't worry. It's fine. I swear. Knight's honor. You, you don't need to, to do that. Go on. I believe in you. Good. Have a safe journey. Yes. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> My wounds are rotting. I can feel... I, can, I can't heal them. Losing blood. It's cold. Faster than M Mr. Shevchik. Bigger than Mr. Ingra. These two... <laughs> Should I forfeit? No. Just hold on. I can still... Hit. She should have fainted. You go. <sighs> Boring fight. Just smash her head in. Go. Quickly. <clears throat> the Sarkas raises his weapon up high. The sun shines brightly on the girl trying to regain her balance. <coughs> the blood on the ground, the metallic taste in her mouth, ears buzzing, head spinning, the fragrance of dirt after rain. She tries to support her body with her hands, but gives in to the intense pain. Old wounds, hands... <sighs> it's over. <laughs> Maria lies on the ground, unmoving. The sorrowful scene is reflected in the Sarkas' knight's emotionless eyes. Suddenly, her vision brightens. Perhaps the clouds blocking out the sun have dissipated, or perhaps the angle of the sunlight just happened to pass through the building's shade. The next moment, he hears a thunderous sound. All the cells in his body are warning him telling him that he must act immediately, that he must strike his defenseless knight, Little Knight. His vision brightens even more. At the same time, the war hammer in his hand flies off, knocked away by someone. And we'll go immediately into the after story. There is an old man in the audience. This old man has not a speck of interest in competition nights. At the behest of his beloved grandchild, he has gra uh, grudgingly purchased two tickets to the event so hyped up by the newspaper and media. He frowns, he sighs, for he does not know why the crowd cheers for the public execution of the young Kuranta by the Sarkas. He does not think anything is wrong, for he too was once a knight a campaign knight without a noble title. He merely scoffs, scoffs at the competition, at the Sarkas. Yet the battlefield suddenly flares with a blazing light. The old man remembers that, knight, uh, that the knight is the young lady of the Neural family. What a pity, he laments as he stares at the dazzling light. At the same time, the very few Casimirs present in the audience simultaneously recalled an old story. The story takes place in a land beyond rivers, forests and lakes, in a great fortress formed of towers and walls. Every day, as night falls, blazing torches form an unbroken line. The Campanonite's armor gleams beneath the moonlight. The sharp edges of these silver lances point at the restless enemy prowling in the darkness. The invaders are ruthless. 
the Lithanians capable of coloring the sky black out the moon. The terrible armies of Ursus overwhelm the castle walls. Cities are captured and brought into Ursus in humiliation. The lines fall back once and again, as Silverlands becomes a mocking joke leveled at the knights by the warmongers. They are pushed to the outskirts of the last city, the last line of defense. Where Casimir's makes its last stand, a pegasus with golden hair appears. On the dawn of the day when the Ursus suffered their first defeat of the war, on the faraway horizon of Casimir's, two suns rise. Light. The light does not dissipate. Rays of light diffuse into a haze, banishing the terror. At this moment, even the sun itself nods, welcoming the returning night. Maria. Stand up, Maria. <laughs> Margaret? Maria, you've grown up. You've really done well. No, that's not Maria's art. What happened? Mr. Charney, you just received a message from the Armorless Union. A beam of light crashed into the arena from a kilometer away northwest. It was very, very fast. They couldn't even get a glimpse of what it was. Terrorist attack? It doesn't seem like a weapon. It's a person, a Kuranta, but only the strongest knights are able to handle speed like that. No. Impossible. Light. Could it be? Where's the enemy? Too bright, can't see. Mission must be completed, no matter who. Kill the target first. <clears throat> Knocked off my feet, barehanded. <sighs> Foul arts are tortured Sar and tortured Sarkas infected. Is this what a knight should be? <clears throat> Margaret? Wait, is it really you? I'm not hallucinating, am I? It's me. <laughs> really? Yes. Margaret? You've done well, Maria. Margaret, what, what took you so long? Wretch. Kill them both. <laughs> no. Don't even think about it. Why can't I hit her? Her light is gathering and suppressing our arts. Retreat, I will deal with her. It's her! She came in that light! It's... it's... that's... that's the Radiant Knight! What's going on? The Exiled Radiant Knight returns at the climax of this fight? Hey! Go get the spokesman. What the hell is going on? What? Huh? She broke the rules, but that's not important. To save her sister, the Radiant Knight did whatever it took to return to Casimir's. Exceptional courage, extraordinary demeanor, unrelenting in the face of the two knights from hell. Let us cheer for the Radiant Knight! That's... Margaret? That knight with the shield is the Radiant Knight? Why did she come back to Casimir's? I don't even recognize her anymore. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Voice, by the way. Ebony Mob. <clears throat> I don't even recognize her anymore. It's her. What has she been through all these years? <sighs> the Radiant Knight that spirited Margaret. She's returned. <sighs> Just be a deer. Let us through. Sorry. No can do. So we gotta put our lives on the line then, huh? I'd really rather you don't. I'll say it again, there is nothing you can do. I live by a rule, I don't fight with anyone but my target. 
As long as you stay away from the arena, you get to live. Hmm? It's getting bright? Hey, V, look over there. What? That light, that... Old man, Neural? This is a lot more intense than Maria Sarts. Could it be? But the two Lazarites, it can't be. Hmm. It's me. Time to stop playing, little Pegasus. Pack up and skedaddle. What? The Radiant Knight herself is in the mix. No point to, uh, to guard the door anymore. Is there? <laughs> I think I get the, the gist of it, but you st but you still failed even with the both of you. Don't be so suspicious of your superiors, little Pegasus. The board of directors only asked us to watch the Radiant Knight after all, not fight her. I was thinking that even if we did fight, I would have that dumb-faced idiot with me, so it wouldn't be any problem at all. Turns out there was uh, a tiny issue we... a uh, tiny issue, shall we say. First off, the Radiant Knight seems to have gotten just that little bit stronger. There also seems tro There are also some troublesome horns together with her. It's really annoying. Well, if it's even giving you trouble, you're wasting your time telling me about it. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to tell you about it because the target is approaching your location right now. Hmm, might be too late actually. Well, try to avoid fighting at all costs. Good luck surviving, little Platinum. Sorry? Uh, wait. What the hell are they doing? Could it be Mliner? No, can't be. She, he should still be in the in his office. Then... Mm. B what? Just now. Was that a blue shadow? V. I know... What's happening? I've never felt like this before. Don't move. Breathe slowly and look around. Feels like I've been made. Are those two... And those two look... Jumpy. Oh, here. A white horned Sarkas holding a sword stops in front of them. She breathes softly, raising her eyes at them. Hmm. Of course, it'd be difficult to handle. They're not even knights. Let them pass. Their names aren't on the list anyway. Thank you. Liz, can you still move? Yes, it's bright over there. It's Nurl. Let us go, then. Yes. Really, what's going on today? That Sarkas just now. Does she know Margaret? What's happening? It's really Margaret. V! Margaret's back! Don't yell. Then, what about us? Do we keep going? Don't stare at me like that. You get to live. <laughs> they cancelled the mission. I don't have a reason to stop you anymore. You get to live. You're gonna leave just like that. Halt! V, don't bother with them. Let's get to the arena. Damn Tarmalus Union. Margaret Neural. The Radiant Knight. Where's the arena security? S security? That was the Radiant Knight charging at full power. We'd probably have to raise the city's barrier to stop her. <laughs> Radiant Knight. <laughs> Radiant Knight. If things as they are now, why did you e I even return? To look at the Knight's epitaph? Mr. Charney. We've received word from the General Chamber of Commerce. You... Hmm. Mr. Malkievich. Uh, yes? No matter what happens next, even if I don't return, you must not leave this room. Oh, okay. Yes, I've already prepared everything beforehand. Yes, Charney? You have already done everything you could, so just wait for the curtain call. 
How amusing. <laughs> Sir? Ah, excuse me. Mr. Charney, your phone? I know, I know. Please excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Night techniques. Put drug overdose and signs of overlines on arts. Also... <clears throat> I will suppress her. Kill the target. The mentally crippled Sarkas warrior brandishes his weapon, arts and the smell of grave. But the Radiant Knight does not move. Kill her! Hmm. The explosive energy has been dissipated. Die! <clears throat> you still have strength? Maria, your wounds. Margaret, you once sent a knight raises her shield to protect others, right? But now, on this battlefield, there is no one that you need to protect. <laughs> I will become your shield, so... Move aside, I will blast them both to death. I'll do my best. <clears throat> she abandoned her shield, but your arts... This... Impossible. The Warhammer is her staff. She is. Are you ready, Maria? Yes. To be a knight is to be the noble light that illuminates the land. The Radiant Knight who charged onto the field has abandoned her shield after just a few short exchanges. Hold on, wait! Remember the two-handed Warhammer craze that followed the Radiant Knight? Watch her sing that hammer, her shield long forgotten. This is the old-school Radiant Knight. She's out there, against all odds. The turn of the legend. The return of the legend, the National Council could drag her away right after this match. This could be our only chance to witness the glory of the Radiant Knight. This... this art... this glow... <sighs> Why are you allowed to give off that kind of light so impassively, you arrogant little? Do you really think yourself the sun, Radiant Knight? How long has it been since we saw Margaret put her shield down? Her light, it's hot. She will be fine, right? I've never seen her fail after looking like that. The girl is a lot like Neural. Yes, that's her sister. <laughs> what a cute little knight. I can see the resemblance. Arrows, ran out. <clears throat> Your arts. <laughs> He's forming arrows using arts. I'll block them. Leave the rest to me. Can't penetrate this damned light. The audience is quiet. Margaret does have an advantage. Those two Sarkas are strong and w work well together. But I don't feel like Margaret will lose. I didn't even think this she's uh, disadvantaged. Her techniques are mesmerizing. Her demeanor is so calm, yet her light burns so brightly. It reminds me of old Neural when he was young. Uh, un unbelievable! Totally unbelievable! The radiance from the, every swing of Margaret's Warhammer completely dispels her opponent's arts. Even the cracks the Radiant Knight step. <clears throat> Pardon. Even the cracks the Radiant Knight steps on are filled with light. What amazing, brilliant arts! Combat techniques of of this level. This is definitely befitting of a champion. The true strength of a knight. <sighs> My wounds aren't hurting as much anymore. Is this Margaret's arts too? Caring about me even during a battle like this. <clears throat> my hammer. No weapon then. With my hands, I'll tear you apart. Kill her. <laughs> Margaret has a strange expression on her face. It's...
pity for these two Sarkas because they are called knights? Or is it because of their circumstances? Maria. Ah, I'm here. I'll leave the support to you. Yes. Do it. Yes. Repent. <laughs> At this moment, the entire arena descends into silence. No one has realized that the match has ended. There aren't any knights boasting about their victory, nor are there defi the defiant howls of the loser. The corrupted Sarkas kneel on the ground. They have not fallen over, and the Radiant Knight does not strike. She looks down upon the two Sarkas, then takes a knee and extends a, her hand. <clears throat> there is no reply from the Sarkas. You should not give up on your destiny. <clears throat> no. As if unwilling to bow to the two young girls, they remain silent, unable to stand. The Radiant Knight turns. Maria? Uh, what? We've won. This is unbelievable! Can you believe your eyes? Because I sure can't! The Radiant Knight, who suddenly entered the fight, the Knights Association that left it hap that let it happen! Oh my god, I... Th this... I've never seen a situation like this in all my years of commentating, though I don't know how the National Council will react, it doesn't change the fact that they won! I, uh... Mr. Mob... Oh, oh, you're here. I am deeply honored to announce to everyone! Mr. Spokesman, what should I do? Acknowledge it. Acknowledge her. The winner is the young and miraculous Maria, and she who has returned from her long exile, the Pegasus that everyone knows, the Radiant Knight, Margaret Nurl! That's right, Mr. Mob. I really do appreciate your ability to fan the favor of the audience. Hold the fort for a while. Someone will come to handle this. Cheer for her! Sophia, where are you going? Marcin, where are they? Uh, th that one? Is it really Margaret? Would Margaret come back now? N no matter. She's in exile. Why didn't she tell us? All right, both of you calm down. Neither might have known about this. But for now, we need to leave. The reporters in the crowd are going to swarm this place. We have to find a way to get the Radiant Knight home. Radiant Knight! That's the Radiant Knight from the last season! Make way, make way! Let me get a picture! Everyone, everybody, please remain calm! No matter what happened, we have to make sure that the competition adheres to the proper procedures all the way up to the end! What should I do next? You can't con contact the spokesman? Idiot, go look for him at the VIP seats! Hold on! That, that's the Vislash Knight! The Vislash Knight suddenly rushed toward the Radiant Knight from the crowd! Zaf uh, 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 Aunt Sophia? You, why are you back? D did she just slap the Radiant Knight? Huh? Uh, uh, this looks like it'll be in the papers tomorrow. I'm sorry, but I've returned. That slap was for Maria. Uh, hmm? I'll spare you, you my own. Thanks for sparing me. But you used your right hand just now. When did that happen? Now isn't the time to talk about that. The National Council will definitely not allow an exile to return to Casimir's. We have to leave before the reporters and the National Council show up. Uh, uh, right now? But the competition results haven't... It doesn't matter. She's here and that's way more important than the competition. Narl. Careful, Liz. You don't need to worry so much. Alright, hold my hand tight. These two Sarkas? Don't worry, they're my friends. Shining, can you do me a favor? Yes. <coughs> I, I fight uh, these are healing arts. You. 
Sarkas, you, it can't be you, you healed me. Your injuries are very serious, but they are not from this match. The scars of drug usage may never be removed. You should take better care of yourselves. Go away. Don't touch me. <clears throat> I... Wait, you... you are... <clears throat> Neural. Yeah, I know. These two assassins from the Armorless Union are still watching us. Now is not the time to celebrate. Uh, Armorless Union, you... Time to run, Neural? No. A victorious knight has no reason to scurry away like a coward. If they wish to stop us, just let them try. Neral, over there. Ah, it's Mr. Kowal and Mr. Vogel Vogelweide. Have they found something? What do you think? Of course they're preparing a way for you to escape. The three of us will help keep the crowds away from you. But the National Council will definitely be paying you a visit. You'll have to deal with them yourself. Margaret. Yeah? It's really great that you came back. The usual place. Don't be late. Of course. That's Nurl's family? She's come back home. We can see... We can all see her joy now. So let's give her some space. She's the Radiant Knight, after, after all. No one in Casimir's can touch her. Right. We'll regroup with Amia later. Margaret raises her head. She used to hate this land with every fiber of her being. Maria. Ah, yes. Let's go home. But this is her home. Hmm. You're here. What about your little follower? He's the next one. Ah, how cruel. Just tell me the answer. Well, aren't you straightforward? You already know the answer. Why ask me? Hmm. May maybe you can live better. No, maybe I will die on the way to my exile. Maybe you will be the one to do it. <clears throat> Maybe. Don't blame me if I am. Of course. It won't happen through the National Council. You'll have to leave by tonight. Is there anything you need to take care of? Hmm. Shevchik has a young son. He was present during the incident. Right. I wish to ask you... To make sure that he never has a chance to speak the truth. Alright. And yes, this was the reason why I didn't want to uh, go from uh, before story to match to after story. Because just of the uh, continuity and uh, a certain setup. But anyway... As always, let us add the descriptions of the two uh, two um, boss opponents of this side story. First, we have the Corrupted Knight, a Sarkas knight with a broken horn, horn who radiates terror and shows clear signs of excessive drug use. Uses a warhammer in battle, crushes enemies with terrifying bloodlust. When the Withered Knight falls, takes up the quest and becomes dramatically stronger. Every step he takes, spreads corruption. And the second one is the Withered Knight, a Sarkar's Knight with a broken horn who radiates terror and shows clear signs of excessive drug use. Uses a cursed bow in battle, can shoot multiple targets at once and plant seeds of withering arts. When the Corrupted Knight falls, takes up the quest and becomes dramatically stronger. Knights that are hostile to him will shift to Wither. So yeah, for this deployment... We will focus pretty much on uh, both characters present in the story, in the environment, and also uh, for the vanguards, just to accumulate a couple of points in the middle of the map, we will be using two knights that come from the uh, Penus Silvestris nightclub, which are obviously Flametail and Wild Mane. 
And the rest of them, pretty much, we're gonna be using uh, original uh, original Gnarl. Vistlash is obviously there on uh, on her more DP DPS-oriented skill. Obviously, Blamishine. Platinum, while obviously not participating in the match, uh, will be also there. <laughs> obviously, for the two healers. <laughs> Even though we technically don't need healers, but... Uh, Obviously, they are there, so they're, therefore we'll add Nightingale and Shining. Uh, Fartooth will get a chance to participate in the match she couldn't participate in. <laughs> uh, so sorry, Fartooth. And uh, for the last place, I took just Gravel for the setup for... Uh, pretty much to have her on hand, just in case I need to uh, take care of Spillage. But anyway, let's let this thing roll, shall we? So I will let this thing... <laughs> so I will let this thing run at uh, normal speed. Oh, rather, sorry, at twice the speed until our two bosses appear and then we will put it on uh, times one speed. Just, uh, just to see them get pretty much smacked. Also, I I can't be the only one who hates the sound of like escaping drones from a map that don't affect the uh, overall score, right? That that is just like a built-in innate trigger when you hear the sound of something escaping through a gate. <laughs> All right, our two bad boys are about to leave the gate and there they are sadly they are a bit hard to see now that I think about it but uh, let this go for a while all right skills are activated just so the battlefield is a bit clearer One has fallen, the brother is down, the gnarls win. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> I was hoping for one of the other two, but this is fine as well. Anyway, this will be it for the match. And we will go to our final scene of this event. MNST-3, Silent Departure. The sounds of the cannon salvo cannot hide the silent anger of self-discipline. This season's major will not be peaceful. <clears throat> it's me. The smokespan incident is over. Platinum. Who are you? I'm looking for the director. Doesn't matter. You should have received the authorization code for this terminal. Since you know about this uh, channel, you are not one of the two Lazarites. So... Just keep your suspicions to yourself and refrain from looking too hard. What I am saying next will be between the Armorless Union and nothing to do with the Directors. Alright. A squad of campaign knights crossed into the Twilight Wood in secret. This went unnoticed by the General Chamber of Commerce, so it likely has something to do with the Radiant Knight. Silverlands? The Lazarite will take full responsibility for this matter. Don't trouble yourself. Huh? Since when are they so resp responsible? 
Your mission is to monitor the Radiant Knight in their stead. The Radiant Knight. That's a pain. So they've got an even bigger pain over there. Still unclear. The ripples from a single stone spread far. The future of the Radiant Knight has brought us a lot of trouble. Uh, the future. The return of the Radiant Knight has brought us a lot of trouble. In fact, we're devoting too much of our attention on her. One more thing. No matter what, do not take action against these Sarkas with the Radiant Knight. Those two Sarkas, you seem to know a lot about them. The Confessarius and the Radiant Knight also belong to another company. Will this matter be so simple? I'm not sure. <laughs> Just handle your own tasks properly and don't mess up like before. We'll be busier. <clears throat> Uh, it's the phone again. Are they looking for Mr. Charney? But Mr. Charney has been gone for a while. <sighs> Hello? The spokesman? Ah, uh, no, sorry, Mr. Charney is currently... Uh, uh, what? I dialed the spokesman number and you answered. Therefore, you are the spokesman. Uh, huh? Uh, what? I don't understand. Name. Me? Name. Uh, please uh, call me Malkiewicz. I used to work for Sloma Food Company until Mr. Charney invited me to work with him. Hmm. Uh, sir, is Mr. Charney... Good day, Mr. Malkiewicz. Ah. Uh, uh, sorry, miss. I thought that... I am the director and CEO of Sloma Food Company. You should be familiar with my voice. Mr. Malkiewicz, you are now officially dismissed. Uh, huh? From now on, you no longer belong to the Sloma Food Company, nor the Miska Group. Please keep in mind at all times that you are res representing the General Chamber of Commerce. When the Major ends, you may choose to stay or leave. You will be generously compensated uh, based on your performance. Right now, there are three tasks waiting for you. You have no right to question them. Firstly, ensure the smooth continuation of the Major. This is of the utmost importance. Secondly, guide the public opinion regarding the Radiant Knight and related matters. We are not asking for damage control. What we want are benefits on top of that. Thirdly, some contacts from the Armorless Union will be arriving at your location within three minutes. Supervise them as they carry out their duties. If there are any issues, report directly to the General Chamber of Commerce's Board of Directors. Uh, w uh, wait, I don't want to be... Is there anything you wish to say, Spokesman Malkiewicz? I don't think... No, I, I understand. Very good. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, a dream. This is definitely a dream. I heard the good news. Charnia, uh, uh, Charnia's authority has been completely transferred to you, spokesman uh, Malkiewicz, right? What, what do we do next? You might need a minute. I don't mind taking a break. I... I don't understand. Ugh, why me? Wait, wait. Aren't you the same Platinum? Why did you allow yourself to be pushed into this position? Uh, what should I do? Who knows? Maybe they just wanted to see someone become as nasty as they are. Don't think too much when, they, when you're in Casimir's. But just look at me. I can't even afford a decent suit. I... Right, Mr. Charney must have arranged some task for you. You should know what the Armorless Union is doing. No idea. Uh... I only know what I'm doing. Uh, th then what are you doing? Oh, usually people stop asking when I answer like that. You... Never mind. I screwed something up a while ago and now I have to deal with it. Five night assassins were made while... <clears throat> were made while hunting a target. 
And then they disappeared. The armorers union went missing? Are you really prepared to know the truth? I, I have no other choice. Really? Pay close attention to the Pinus Silvestris nightclub then. They are more than just competition knights. They openly oppose the armorless union. The Iranian knight has returned? Word on the street is she descended from the skies and rescued Maria. Rescued? The Knights Association. No, it probably came from high up. Higher up. They arranged that match for Maria. The audience all believed that it was just a thrilling performance, but those with discerning eyes could tell. They were going at it for real. If the Radiant Knight was any later, Maria would be dead. Are they giving up the game already? Maybe we gave them more credit than they deserved. These things happen in every season of the Major. They don't care. What they do care, uh, what they do care about do doesn't matter. I never expected them to understand, but the thing they uh, don't even want to keep up appearances. What's important is that in Casimir's, no one cares. They're telling people we're out of uh, competition for a while because of a training accident. That's ugly. That's ugly. <laughs> hey, what the hell's up with that? Isn't that totally good for us? If they had gone through the National Council instead of scurrying around in the dark, we'd really be in trouble. You you let yourself get uh, go after just uh, relaxing for a bit. Hmm. Our opponents couldn't wait any longer and acted first, but ended up giving us the win, in, win instead. How could they not be happy? When those two finish their jobs, we'll finally get to the main point. <laughs> what? Didn't you get your fill in the arena? The more I cross weapons with the trash, the more I hate those night nobles. What disgusts me the most is that I used to be one of them. Ah, <sighs> so complicated. They don't have a penny's worth of dignity or faith. The night nobles are totally uh, sellouts now. Don't get yourself worked up. This topic always does that to you. Don't worry, they'll get what's coming to them. Though, before that, we should str uh, straighten out the enemy right in front of us. The Armorless Union. We'll expose them out in the open for all to see, yeah? <clears throat> uh, hey, Margaret, how long has it been since you've been home? Your room is still as it used to be. Uh, I clean it all the time. Oh, I think we should we sold the furniture, though. Uh, but it's fine, at, at least... Maria, you just seeing you all makes me feel like I've returned home. Margaret. Maria, your equipment. Oh, I went and borrowed your old stuff. <laughs> How is it? Fits me nicely, right? Yeah, it's a nice fit. You've really grown up. <laughs> I'm old. I'm as tall as you now. You've worked hard, truly. I wasn't able to talk with you properly in the arena earlier. I've really missed you, Maria. Ah, Cease, you're making me embarrassed. You fought alone until now, but you survived. You've persisted. I was aware what kind of impact my decision back then would have on Uncle and you, but I never thought that you would... Margaret, there's something you absolutely have to do, but you, that you'd... Uh, never back down from, right? Yeah. That you didn't do anything wrong. Besides, I was never able to become like you, though inside and out. But I've started to understand. At least I can think about what Auntie Sophia has always said. I can think about what a knight truly is. Even though I still couldn't become like you, I've been able to get where I am today with everyone's help. If there were ever any beliefs that I held on to, they came from you, because I too am a member of the Neural family. But, but Margaret, you can't ever leave again, not like how you left six years ago. I'll follow you this time, no matter what happens to us in the end, I, I believe in you. Maria, you... <laughs> you've really grown up. Uh, huh? Where, where did all that come from? A anyway, just go upstairs and have a look. Margaret. 
Uncle, this is... Keep quiet. Margaret, what did you come back for? Don't you know what it means for you to appear here? <laughs> you rescued Maria, but why did you return to Casimir's? Do you know how much your father and grandfather sacrificed to send you out? Yet you dare to appear here so brazenly. Do you think that the association and the corporations aren't watching your every step? I will join the Major. Impossible. I will retake the glory that belongs to the Knights. Glory is meaningless. Meaning is in the eye of the beholder. Gazimir's has changed. They have changed. Yet I'm still here. We're all still here. Don't be greedy, Margaret. I imagined you would calm down after leaving Casimir's, but this is your answer. You're wasting my time. Uncle. Enough. In the time I've spent talking to you, a mountain of documents has piled up waiting for me to handle. Don't interrupt my work. Leave Casimir's before things turn worse. You've made a life for yourself, just don't come back anymore. Uncle, how can you say that? Maria? Margaret? Uncle Mliner, I understand your decision. I still respect you just as I did back then. I also hope for your support. Understand? You know nothing of what I've seen, what I've done. Yet you still hold on to your idealistic thoughts. I was once lucky enough to catch a glimpse of hope. I have also experienced the shadow of war. I'm merely choosing to continue believing in my faith and to fight for it. Casimir's will not change one bit, no matter how much the Radiant Knight sacrifices, no matter how much she wins. Of course. Of that, I am very clear. Even so... Even so... Draw your blade, Margaret. Uh, uh, uncle? If you insist so stubborn... If you insist on being so stubborn, I have no choice but to teach you how to give up the hard way. To fall by my blade is far better than falling into the shadow of the Arborless Union. As you wish. Those stupid competition knights are just a bunch of trash willing to be manipulated for the sake of money. If the young mistress of the Neural family were to have an accident as well, don't even bother calling this campaign knight a knight anymore. I'll go flip the National Council's goddamn table myself. <laughs> That's what the old man said. <sighs> Senami, there's no need to mimic him so convincingly. Hmm? But he specifically instructed me to convey the exact message. You don't need to listen to everything he says. He even said if the Grand Knight didn't agree, he'd go to greet the Radiant Knight himself even if he had to hobble all the way there. <laughs> he also said that if you sighed and cupped your head, reluctant to answer, he would... All right, all right. I know how unhappy he is. He hasn't changed at all. Still causing a ruckus in the courts, probably the Casimirs every day, or what few accomplishments he has. Don't forget, he is still an offender. But the National Council, totally corrupted by the General Chamber of Commerce, has no right to convict my old man. They don't represent the citizens or the law at all. They're just representing themselves and the merchants behind them. He taught you that as well? No, I figured that out myself. Uh. <clears throat> Is that all? Ah, there's one more thing. Yeah? The people from Rhode Island seem to have arrived.
And that, my dear friends, is how this side story ends. It pretty much ends where in the future Nurl Light will begin, Rhode Island, actual Rhode Island will arrive at Casimir's, and we will have a long, 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 long story to narrate through. Oh boy. <sighs> that will take probably... I'm just gonna predict right now, it will probably take around five or six parts to narrate through. I am not even kidding. And each part will probably take about an hour and a half minimum. <sighs> that will be work. <laughs> but that will be for another day. Like I said before, if you want to continue this story, it obviously continues through the Penis Silvestris side story, which I did a narration uh, already on this channel uh, almost a year ago, actually, uh, as well. <laughs> so, uh, link will be in the description of the video and on screen at the end of this video. Uh, like I said before, the story of that, uh, if I remember correctly, takes place right before this one uh, kicks off, during this one and after this one, bridging the gap in between uh, the Maria Neural and Neuralite stories, essentially. So it's pretty much an in-between story that will uh, shine some light on events and foreshadow other things to come in the Neural Light story. But anyway, uh, for those of you uh, who will leave right now, if you <laughs> don't, uh, if you're not gonna listen to my ramblings here about the story at the end, uh, all I can say is, if you've liked this video, please. Uh, Leave a like if you would be so nice to, and uh, if you're new to the channel, maybe even consider subscribing. Would be nice to uh, get the channel up to the beautiful number of 1000 at some point. But in the meantime, I do hope you have a fantastic day, and uh, for those of you who are staying, so... My thoughts on the story, well, uh, pff, how to put this, uh, it's been two years since this originally aired, and I'll say this... Uh, Pretty much the same as right now, reading again through it for this narration. Uh, the beginning of the story is um, a bit kind of like... I, I guess it's okay, it's like a, it's like a middle line for me. N nothing major is happening, we get introduced to a shit ton of characters. Uh, obviously we get also immediately introduced to a shit ton of uh, corruption that is prevalent in Casimir's. Every single stage introduces us to one of the major companies and... Uh, Pretty much, pretty much leaders to some extent of uh, Casimir's themselves. <clears throat> uh, but we do get introduced to a ton of characters that will have a role in the future, obviously. Uh, Maria taking up the mantle of her sister, finding her own way is uh, a very nice plot point during the, the whole thing. Uh, Sophia as well, taking up the mantle to be her uh, teacher is another... Uh, I mean, it, it's an it's an okay part, I guess. She is, after all, a... <laughs> but when she later reaches Rhode Island as known from her as a unit, she is essentially an instructor unit, so that kind of fits. Uh, but then we get introduced to a bunch of others. The, we get introduced to Platinum, who at this point is obviously not working for Rhode Island. Uh, that will come at a later date, and uh, look forward to the Neuralite story to see how that turns out. Uh, we get introduced to Flametail and Ashlock, who will obviously have a bigger role in, obviously, the Pinus Sylvester stories that... Pinus Sylvester story that focuses not just on the two of them, but also on the uh, also on the other two knights, uh, Wildmane and uh, Justina. And... Uh, and uh, we get introduced to a bunch of uh, side characters. Charney, for example, is a very conniving little son of a bitch. Uh, while we also get foreshadows to stuff like the uh, uh, Black Knight, who we do actually meet in another side story, as I said during this narration. The Blood Knight, who will who we will meet in a future story. Well, actually, the Neuralite story is where we're gonna meet the, the big guy. Uh, we also see... And I think it took almost the entire side story to actually get to the name of the guy being Malkia, which uh, as well, not that I think about it. Uh, but it, we also see that how he ends up in a position that we will see in the future, uh, with also quite the style change to him. Uh, 
then uh, we... I mean, the story itself is a pretty much a big setup for the bigger story to come later, so there is not much to dissect un unless you want to just nitpick all around all the little details like I'm doing right now of who is present in the story and who isn't. Uh, but... But yeah, essentially... I'll, like I said, the beginning to the middle point of the story until uh, Maria hits the point of uh, fighting uh, left hand is kind of okay-ish. It's pretty much just a tournament arc with a training arc <laughs> with a training arc on top, and then it kicks into gear with her pretty much almost biting the dust to left hand or getting at least seriously injured by him, but overcoming the odds and finally shaping up into a proper knight at that point. Uh, plus. Um, plus, we get the appearance of Nero. I remember that was like a big surprise for me in the past when I was reading through the story the first time. Like, that Nero actually dropped back into Casimir's, Casimir's and uh, that uh, Shining and Nightingale came together with her. I mean, those two kind of, when you think about it, it's kind of an obvious thing that those two would come with her because they are pretty much inseparable. Uh... And the stories surrounding them are... Uh, the three of them literally fall into that category that can only be uh, explained in the sentence of the friendship and com camaraderie be be between those three is something that is... Uh, that even a... Uh, that even a writer or a poem writer would have trouble with. <laughs> It's one of those. But anyway, we see them appear. We also get foreshadow that uh, Rhode Island will be finally there. Gravel actually makes an appearance. Again, this is Gravel before she joins Rhode Island. Pretty much every single one of them outside of... Uh, that we know our operators like uh, Blemishine, Vish Vislash, um, Gravel and Platinum at this point still are not part of Rhode Island uh, in this story but will become at some point in the future. Uh, also, just as a reminder, this story is taking place in between Acts 1 and 2 of the main campaign, in, the, in that one giant big uh, one-year gap. And as you've noticed from the narration, uh, this very first story actually takes place over several, several weeks to months, essentially. So it covers a huge section of time. I think... I think together with Neural Light, it's like a three-month period, beginning somewhere in April or May and going all the way to July, the end of July, somewhere around there. The, Casim the Casimir's Major takes a long time to go through. <laughs> it takes a long time. But yeah, anyway, it, in 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 general, uh, my favorite part, obviously, about this story is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Nurl's bombastic entry into the into the match. That is one of those things. Just that is one of those things that I would just like to see, like in the future. I know it's never gonna happen, but it, I would love to see just this part as an OVA episode. It's just like a bombastic entry from her, and that would be nice. Also. Yeah, I obviously used uh, in the showcase there uh, the old Neural, because this is not uh, Neural the Radiant Knight yet. Her, her rather old self or upgraded self, where she picks up a different uh, battle arm, essentially. But that will happen in the future. But anyway, the story was fine. Like I said, the ending was my obviously favorite part about it. The whole kerfuffle and uh, yeah. That is about it. But anyway, I think that is quite enough. Like I said, I don't really have much to say about this, this story outside of beginning was okay, middle is where it starts kicking off properly, and then the ending is nice. But yeah, anyway, this will be it for this narration. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I said at the beginning, if you've liked this part, please consider leaving a like in the uh, 
on the on the video it helps it being recognized in the algorithm and uh, recommended to more people and uh, thank you for listening good luck with the polls on Blender you will see the video very soon and uh, I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are and I will see you in the next one until then bye bye